How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel for some news on Battlefront 2 and the content that we would have gotten if Battlefront 2 was never cancelled. Because Dennis Branvell, the former creative director for Battlefront 2, has come out and revealed a lot of the plans that DICE had for Battlefront 2 and also some for Battlefront 2015. And you guys are going to feel a fair bit of pain when I tell you what content Battlefront 2 was planned to get after the release of the Scarif DLC, which of course turned out to be... Battlefront 2's final update before DICE moved on to Battlefield 2042. Now, if you guys are enjoying the more frequent uploads here on the channel lately, then be sure to drop a like on the video and let me know down in those comments below what content that you wish we got in Battlefront 2 the most. Because odds are, it actually may have very well been on the way. So let's dive into it. So out of nowhere, Dennis Branvell, who was of course, like I said, the creative director of Battlefront 2, he was the George Lucas of Battlefront as fans like to refer to him as. He of course sometime in the wake of EA's rejection of DICE's proposal for a Battlefront 3 left DICE to pursue other career options. And he seemed more shattered about the downfall of Battlefront and the lack of a Battlefront 3 more so than anyone. But now he has come out and revealed a lot to do with Battlefront 2's past, its future as well as Battlefront 2015. So Dennis posted on Reddit the early plans for Battlefront 2015 and the content that they had planned to put into the game. So we'll quickly touch on that and then we'll get into the Battlefront 2 stuff. There will be timestamps below if you're just here for the Battlefront 2 stuff though. However, I do recommend you stick around for the Battlefront 2015 stuff because it's kind of cool. Alright, so this is what Dennis had to say over on Reddit when responding to the original plans for Battlefront 2015 including its DLC. He says... For the Outer Rim, Chewbacca and Bosk, originally going to be Sullust only pack depending on other stuff. Bespin, Lando and IG-88, where rigging a droid character was going to take too long. So Dengar replaced and all bipedal droid characters were moved to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Death Star, Obi-Wan and Tarkin. I can't fully recall why we didn't do Tarkin. Maybe it had something to do with the character going to be showing up in Rogue One later on. We weren't sure that Rogue One DLC was going to happen, so backup plan was R2-D2 as a full-on hero instead of a game mode objective replacing Obi-Wan on Death Star and Obi-Wan headlining a Mos Eisley pack for Battlefront 1, likely with Greedo. Since Rogue One did happen, Mos Eisley was instead moved to Battlefront 2. When I joined Star Wars Battlefront 2's development, I then realized they still weren't doing Obi-Wan, so I flipped. As you probably noticed at EA Play, I was quite satisfied with Obi-Wan finally joining the game. So that's pretty interesting for Dennis to come out and tell us that. It's not necessarily information that is need to know or anything, like we didn't need to know this, but it is cool that DICE originally had heroes like IG-88 planned for Battlefront 2015, but they just couldn't invest the time needed to build that kind of a character. So that's why we got Dengar in Battlefront 2015, and Dengar was cool, so I guess it was a fortunate difficulty. But seeing IG-88 would have been really cool to see. Also, the fact that the original plan for the Death Star DLC was actually going to be Obi-Wan and Tarkin as heroes, which is nuts to think about because it's so different to what we actually got in that DLC. We of course got Bosk and Chewie, and that they actually had an idea of using R2 as an actual hero in the game instead of a game mode objective. And then his comments on Obi-Wan not being done in Battlefront 2 when he arrived onto the project and that annoyed him. It's kind of funny because when he did announce Obi-Wan at EA Play in 2018, you could tell that he was so pleased to be doing it. So that's some pretty awesome insight to the original plans for Battlefront 2015. Like I said, it's not information that we needed to know or anything, but the idea of getting heroes like Tarkin, Obi-Wan, R2, IG-88, it's pretty cool to just know that that's what the original plan was. And it just goes to show that it would be amazing to be a fly on the wall when they're throwing out ideas for Battlefront games. But now let's talk about Battlefront 2 and the stuff that Dennis said. Now there isn't as much of it, but it probably hits the hardest out of anything you're going to see in this video. And it is just making Battlefront 2's abandonment so, so much more frustrating. Like it wasn't frustrating enough knowing that it died for Battlefield 2042, which is just a mess. But anyway, this is what Dennis said over on Twitter. Now I will read the entire thread as it has some stuff to do with Battlefront 2015 as well. He says, since we're looking back at Star Wars Battlefront 1, here's some fun behind the scenes early planning stuff. Things change quite likely with creative plans, especially on live titles. Dagobah was off the table for us. It was hard to tell a believable what if scenario of the rebels and empire fighting on that planet. Plus Yoda and his origins are of course extremely precious as it should be. So Dagobah was something that they just pretty much threw out for Battlefront, which is interesting to hear. And I think we all would have loved to have seen Dagobah though. So it's kind of 
kind of sucks to hear it, but you know, it is what it is. But here, here is the pain segment of the video. A Twitter user asked about Battlefront 2, and Dennis said, There may or may not have been prototypes of Mustafar, Ventress, and Ahsoka for a Clone Wars drop following Scarif. Like, I kind of wish he just didn't say this. Now, we did know that the former hero designer for Battlefront 2 did allude to working on Ahsoka, so we already knew that they had plans for this. But to get Dennis to come out and say, yeah, there was prototypes for Ahsoka, Ventress, and Mustafar, the fiery red planet from Revenge of the Sith, one of the most requested locations for Battlefront 2, like, it just, it sucks. Now, it's not quite Coruscant, so I can hold on to at least some of my sanity with this, but it is pretty shattering to know that if Battlefront 2 continued after the Scarif drop, we probably would have gotten a Clone Wars drop which featured Mustafar, Ventress, and Ahsoka. And there probably would have been more stuff from the Clone Wars in there too, like new reinforcements like Magna Guards and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't even want to think about that. Now, we did go on further mentioning more about the other planets, saying, If you're asking me though, I never felt our exploration into our own planet of Sullust was worth the effort, especially when it ended up looking quite a bit like Mustafar anyway. We probably could have had Bespin and Death Star for Star Wars Battlefront 1's launch, if not for the time spent on Sullust. Like, all this Mustafar talk is so frustrating to hear. Like, I have talked in the past about, you know, what could have been for Battlefront 2, the potential, and I mean, in a recent video, I did say in big bold letters that Battlefront 2, it's not a bad Star Wars game. It's not the best Star Wars game. Battlefront 2, all it is, is a waste of potential. And the stuff that Dennis has said here has just absolutely hammered that home for me. That is Battlefront 2's legacy, a waste of potential. That's all I see with Battlefront 2 now. It's all a lot of people see with Battlefront 2 now. But I mean, we will get a Battlefront installment one day, a brand new Battlefront game. It sure as hell isn't going to be from DICE, and it's probably almost definitely not going to be from any studio under EA's control, but it will come eventually by someone. And, I mean, they've got their work pretty much cut out for them. They've essentially just got to make Battlefront 2 again, update the graphics for next gen, and then add the content that Battlefront 2 was sorely missing. It's not a big brain strategy to get the best Battlefront game out there, at least in terms of content. But it's just a waiting game to see just who is going to do it. And I really hope someone really jumps on the opportunity quickly because EA have absolutely wasted it. But guys, let me know all of your thoughts on this in the comment section below. It's pretty frustrating to hear. Trust me, I know. A lot of the recent videos that we've been covering here on the channel have been really, really frustrating stuff due to EA's incompetence. But let me know your thoughts. Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe to the channel if you are new for all things Star Wars games. I do feel like more is going to come out in wake of this. So make sure you have those notifications on as well so you don't miss your dose of Battlefront pain. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.